Hey guys, Youngblood with you to cover the additional information that we received on the uh, GN or Aapoa Knox uh, from the uh, Q&A article that was just released. And jumping right in, we get some information regarding the ships that are actually capable of hauling this bike, and they confirm that the Cutlass, the Freelancer, and the Constellation can carry it, which, in all actuality, isn't really a surprise at all, since we knew that they can cover the or carry the Dragonfly, and the Dragonfly is a little bit smaller. However, they said that it will actually fit in the Reliant or the Avenger, but the problem comes down to how it's actually secured, and it may not be full locked down based on the mag plate configuration so it could do damage to the bike or the ship when in transit but they're interested to see how that uh, physics actually works um, we have seen some things like cargo nets and ships like the Cutlass and the Avenger, so I'm hoping that we end up getting other options to secure cargo or ships like this other than just mag plates in the future, which would end up opening up some possibilities. Um, we also get confirmation that the Nox acts like the Dragonfly and that it can't leave a planet's surface to start flying in the air or to space, and that it cannot enter an atmosphere from space. But it is capable of doing either sorts of travel, just not the transition between them. Uh, they did say that as far as jumping canyons is concerned, uh, it's best to think of the ship as a ground vehicle, so I take that as the no-go. Um, it would probably be plummeting to the ground. Um, and someone asked about oceans and water locations, and basically the answer was if you're able to drive over those, then they said yes, you will be able to actually hover above that water. Um, it sounds like both of these bikes just need something to push their mag plates against, so it doesn't really matter what type of surface it is, it just needs to be something more tangible than air. Um, that's confirmed a bit more when they say that even though you're hovering, your experience as far as bumps over terrain, it's going to kind of mirror that. So if there's a bump in the ground, you're going to sort of jump over it as opposed to keeping a smooth trajectory, um, you know, altering how high you are above the ground. It's probably not going to be as bumpy or wild as something like an Ursa, but it's not a smooth shot either. In regards to speed, um, we already have some speed numbers for the Knox with an SCM of 220 and a pretty impressive 550 in Afterburner, which should feel pretty crazy on a bike. Now, those numbers are for when you are in space, and on planet, they drop pretty drastically, probably based on drag on the planet, um, to 40 SCM and 100 in Afterburn, though they do say that that's going to feel very fast when you're one meter off the ground. Um, they also said that the ship is going to um, kind of lean when you're adding strafe to your maneuvers, and when you're done with the yaw portion of that kind of um, maneuver, it's going to end up leveling out some, almost giving a skidding effect. Uh, all of this means that the Nox will indeed be faster and more agile than the Dragonfly, being more focused on racing, while the Dragonfly may end up being better in rough terrain, so you end up having to plan your routes accordingly. Some of that speed is related to the fact that it has competition class components, which should have an upgrade path most likely to other grades of components in the vehicle class. Um, but they are relatively new, and they haven't really documented all of that yet. Uh, there was a question about the max size of armor that you can actually wear while driving the craft, since it's pretty tight in the way the ship kind of hugs you once you get into it. Um, and they said that they don't know yet, but it's something that they're evaluating for all of the ships anyways. Um, so there may be restrictions that we find out later on. Now, in that same light, they also say that as of now, if the power on the ship dies, they aren't planning on having you being pinned into the seat based on the retractable shielding, but they do kind of like that idea, and they may play with it in the future. Uh, there is no storage on the Nox like we expected, but they did confirm for the Dragonfly, um, stating that in order to carry cargo, you do have to sacrifice the second seat and that passenger. Um, that also means that you can't store a weapon on the side of the Nox or something like that. It's just whatever you can actually carry on your body, and that's going to be impacted by your armor, which we don't know how, what size of armor you can actually wear. Uh, as far as weaponry on the Nox itself, it does come with two size 1 ship weapons that sit under the craft, but they are fixed, so no gimbals is an option for that. Uh, it was said in ATV to be powerful in combat, which is specifically more focused on the maneuverability and the speed as compared to the Dragonfly, so while there is the same firepower, the Nox would have a better chance at keeping the slower targets in line. Um, while going up against soft targets, it should actually be a pretty formidable um, threat to be able to, um, you know, flank and chase and lay down heavier firepower than something like using handheld weapons would provide. Um, the Nox uh, does not have landing gear since it uses hover technology and magnets, and it will stay in hover mode even on extreme low power. However, if you really totally run out of juice, it will hit the ground, which would be bad for the ship. That being said, though, it is able to recover fuel while in use, so it doesn't have a range in SCM, but in Afterburner, there is a limit. That does bring up some questions regarding reserve power and if there's a battery life or power plant lifespan that impacts the ability to hover or potentially you're burning some fuel and you're not actually recovering fuel if it's just sitting there. Um, so we'll need to figure out what factors are actually going into that to actually cause the knocks to hit the ground. Um, there was an interesting question regarding the price and value. 
And really, what makes it more valuable than a starter ship? And the answer that was given was pretty expected, um, that it's less versatile and it is less capable. However, um, it is a performance craft with specialization in mind, including some planetary surface travel that full ships may not be capable of, so it's sort of comparing apples and oranges. And finally, when asked about stealth, they treated it like any other ship, talking about balancing your power plant options and kind of limiting your signature through power management and opting for non-competition class components for less signature as well. Now, there was concept art which had stealth listed on the display, uh, but I think that might end up being more of a standard HUD display to kind of help you manage your signature as opposed to an option that's specific to the Nox in particular. So that's the information that we got updated on the Knox. I still think it's one of the cooler releases that we've seen in a while. So if you're looking for a space bike and something to explore on, it should be one of your options to consider. You just need to decide if you want speed and agility or capability and versatility when picking between the Knox and the Dragonfly. So if you have questions on any of this, please let me know. Otherwise, I appreciate you guys watching. Stay tuned for more and have yourselves a wonderful day. Take care.